electronic medical records, inventory management systems, clinical data portals, how are new provider-facing technologies delivering strategic insight and value for physicians and pharmaceutical manufacturers? What untapped opportunities lie ahead? Join us to find out. In the Know starts now. Welcome to In The Know, your source for insight and analysis on the issues that matter to specialty pharma. I'm your host, Gina Clark. Today, we take a look at the role of technology in the care environment, not only how it is poised to increase efficiencies and improve patient care, but also how it can help manufacturers make more informed decisions about their products. Joining us are two guests, Del Dan Levitz, Chief Information Officer for Amerisource Bergen Specialty Group, and Neil Herson, President of ASD Healthcare. Thanks to both of you for being here today. Thank you, Gina. With our discussion today centering on provider-facing technologies, it begs the question, why should manufacturers care? In what ways will new technologies in the care environment affect the pharmaceutical industry? Neil, let's start with you. Sure, Gina. Well, we're living in a, in a new world where technology is the driver. And in order to get information, uh, manufacturers want to know have the disease states of the patient so they can do all their planning to know what the future looks like. So in order to do that, they're going to have to collect more data. As they collect more data, they will then be able to create new therapies that will be able to take care of the patients. And as we move forward, um, we're going to start seeing technologies where possibly chips could be utilized that could be inserted into the patient. Uh, gene testing at birth. These are the kind of things that manufacturers will want to know more about because then they can plan and prepare for the future. Dale, what are your thoughts? Well, Gina, it's also about uh, the, the, the regulation and uh, the FDA requiring physicians uh, and providers now to collect more information on the drugs that are being utilized uh, and uh, not only asking the physicians to qualify the patients prior to drug intake but then also following up on uh, longitudinal analysis on the drug intake and the drug outcomes. Traditionally, healthcare has been viewed as lagging behind other industries when it comes to technology innovation and adoption. Do you see this changing in more recent times and if so, what is driving the change? Dale? Yeah, there's no question that it's changing. I think it's changing because of the pervasiveness of technology throughout society. So now uh, people who really were afraid of technology are becoming more comfortable in its use. Uh, they, they're buying products over the internet. They're uh, auctioning their own products over the internet. Uh, they're doing their taxes on the internet. They're collecting news broadcasts and sp sports scores. Uh, as well on their uh, smartphones. And so there's no question that they're becoming more comfortable and familiar with technology and thereby requiring or expecting of their vendors and business partners to do the same. Neil, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, Dale brought up the smartphone and I believe that the smartphone is probably the future to a large degree of where we're going. Everybody's so comfortable with their cell phones today that a lot of information is going to come through that. And I, in healthcare, I see even procurement working through the, the smartphone. But again, there's a lot of other pieces that we'll be able to draw, specifically real-time information. But really looking back, I think uh, healthcare in general really lags behind other technologies. And, and part of the reason is because healthcare is so broad and there's so many components that provide for therapies to be delivered to patients. And it really starts with the manufacturers. And there's got to be uptake there. And from then, of course, government has some input. And we've seen some dollars coming in from the government to try and stir this up and move it forward. But at the end of the day, it's really about all the different pieces of healthcare getting together and really finding a one platform that works for everybody. Dale, you have something else to add. Yeah, I think, um, you know, just following up from what Neil said about the smartphone, uh, one of the things that we're doing, just to, as an example, is uh, notification uh, back to the patient 
uh, provide, using or leveraging the use of their smartphone to inform them when to take the drug and then asking them to provide feedback on uh, how they feel after taking the drug, uh, data that can of course be used by the manufacturer to manage uh, you know, the drug utilization in the future. Uh, this is something that we're doing actually within our pharmacy. In your discussions with healthcare providers, what types of technology are they looking for? And is there a common trait among all these solutions? Neil, let's go back to you. I think the, the big one and probably the most difficult one is electronic medical records, because that is the basis of patient care. What you see is patients, because they have access to so much information, really go from doctor to doctor and will probably have more than one prescription running for a therapy, and obviously that would be contraindicated. So if we had a centralized electronic medical record, I think we could be much, we have a much safer system where doctors will be able to see what prior docs had prescribed. And as we move forward, you know, I think manufacturers to a degree will be able to collect data back, which will able to help them make better therapies. Dale. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree, of course, with Neil on the electronic medical record. I also believe that the practice and the provider in the clinics are expecting or being asked to manage their practice a lot more efficiently. Uh, there, there's a lot of financial pressures that are being placed on them because of the reduction in drug reimbursement as well as uh, in margin uh, reduction. And so uh, they're also looking for practice management systems, uh, lab systems, uh, other uh, uh, you know, solutions. And I think following up from what Neil said, once you collect the data in the uh, electronic medical record system, then you need to actually report on their data, do analysis, and they're looking for tools to help them do, if you will, business intelligence on their own information, as well as information across the industry. I think data has become so much more important and uh, physicians are really getting squeezed. And so as they get squeezed because reimbursement has been cut back in so many areas, whether it be in the private pay sector or even on the government and state side, they are looking for solutions that will help them not only be efficient, but profitable so that they can even stay in business. Recently, the US government has taken an especially active role in promoting healthcare technology. What effect do you believe this has had on both technology development and implementation? Dale? Um, th there's no question that it has had a significant impact uh, and a positive impact. It's uh, exposed uh, the opportunity to deliver more technology to a much wider audience. And um, it's led to the proliferation of a lot, a lot of tools and technologies, uh, the money uh, that's being infused into this area has also led to more creative solutions. And uh, I think that it's going to benefit all of us as patients, uh, healthcare providers, insurers, uh, and manufacturers. Neil, your thoughts? My thoughts are that while dollars have been infused, it's going to take a while to see that uptake. I think healthcare is very slow at changing. People like how their system runs. And to get them all at the same level is going to take more than just dollars. And it's going to take, uh, we're going to have to see people really becoming more focused and uh, compliant in general to make this work. 